no deja de ser un equipo de barrio, eh, con pocos recursos económicos, los medios de comunicación, eh, con un club que le tienen el olvido. Very much ready to see Rayo Vallecano. Rayo are from the vibrant district of Vallecas. Vallecas epitomizes what is a working class area. You just have to look around. You can see clothes hanging out on the line, out in the street. El barrio más popular, eh, donde se encuentran los vecinos más luchadores. Eh, aquí se ha sufrido muchísimo durante muchos años. There's a bridge that we 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 crossed down there called the the Puente de Vallecas. And you cross that bridge and straight away there's a perception you're in, in a different area. Every, every poster has a social message. The posters are for marches against social cuts, against cuts in education, and everything with a left-wing flavor. Abonado del Rayo Vallecano, cualquier simpatizante del club, eh, sabe perfectamente lo que es Vallecas y la parte social. Dentro de lo que es el, el conjunto del Rayo Vallecano, digamos por lo que se conoce al Rayo Vallecano. Trying to find this hostel. We yeah. stupidly didn't write down the address. We don't have a phone. We don't have any internet. <laughs> the hostel's in the middle of nowhere. You don't really run into very many Rio fans on a day-to-day -day basis. I wouldn't anyway around the, the city. Um, but the people who you do meet are real football people. You know, they're really into their club. They love the club. They know everything that's going on about it. They epitomise the underdog and the underdog spirit and the underdog mentality. It's a poor brother of uh, Madrid football. It's been always considered the third team in Madrid. Now somehow someone said or think that Getafe is. It is not first of all because it's not belonging to Madrid. It's great to watch and it's brilliant because Rayo don't have the resources of some of the other teams, even some of the other teams around them in the table. Evidentemente aquí en España, eh, nivel de la liga sabemos lo que hay, hay dos equipos que tienen todo el poder, el resto se reparte en lo que es las migajas. The TV money is very, very, very unfairly divided, where the likes of Barcelona and Real Madrid get in excess of 150 million euro from the TV deal, where, where Rayo receive, I think it's 12 million. So, I mean, straight away you're dealing with one of the most uneven ballparks in, in football, and yet they managed to hold their own. Last year, finishing eighth in the, in the Primera Division. This chip I'm reading as I walked out one midsummer's morning by Laurie Lee. Kenneth Allsup says, a marvellous book. fans who really get noted for their for their protests and for their displays are the, are the, the Rio fans, the Bucaneros. The stuff that they protest against, sometimes it is you know, something to do with the club or it's to do with football, but sometimes it can be a, a political issue or a social issue or something. Fairly recently they had protests about um, they're trying to change the abortion law in Spain to, to take a few steps backwards to, to make it harder, take away some of the choice that, that women might have. And the, the fans had a well, t get your hands off our bodies in a more crude language than, <laughs> than that. In one particular protest, the Rayo fans cleared the area behind the goal that they call the Fondo, that's where the ultras stand. Fans dressed as priests, fans dressed as mourners, like all in black, carried a fake coffin into the stands during the game to represent the death of modern football. In another creative display to protest the changing of fixture times for television. They emptied the area behind the goal again, except for two people dressed as Bert and Ernie. And then they unraveled a banner saying, please keep the noise down, this is sleep time, not football time. What they do is, is, is very, very creative, very intelligent. Um, it's more just than just a badge for them saying, oh, we're left wing. And they're actually, they're actually politically active and politically involved. We're just walking to the game, it's very lively. <laughs> One new athletic. Yeah. It's going to be 3-1. Yeah. 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 This has got 5-4 written all over it. 4-2 athletic. We met some absolutely lovely people tonight. The atmosphere went a little bit flat at the end, but uh, yeah, it was really enjoyable. Good game. Missed penalty though. We'll put my slogans in. Just walking the back street. We were in the last game of the last minute, last second, 
we needed to score to keep in uh, first division. Trial were playing dreadful, maybe had one shot on goal, it just it wasn't happening. And then um, a ball broke to Michu, who uh, knocked it against the bar, ball rebounded to Raul Tomuda, who was literally two yards out, headed it into the net. Uh, Bayekas exploded, like I've never seen it explode. I mean, they, that was our, our Champions League moment, that was our, our World Cup, our Europa League, our league, all the trophies into one. Tamuda was offside, the referee didn't realise, and if he had realised, he would have been in trouble. But the referee would have had to have some bollocks to disallow the goal, because basically the, the, the pitch was about to be invaded, it was, it was incredible. Me miro en el espejo y soy feliz Y no pienso nunca en nadie más que mí Y no pienso nunca en nadie más que mí Leo libros que no... Fucking the police.